everyone. I'm Brad Nelson. I'm Todd Anderson. And you're watching the Versus series on StarCityGames.com. So today we're going to be playing a little bit of standard in preparation for all the standard events that are just always happening these yeah, days. Yeah, just constant. Yeah, they're just all over the place. The, the whole modern break for a month, that was nice. I didn't like it. Yeah, I, I didn't love it, but yeah. it was nice. I, I'm, I, I prefer to play standard. And uh, I've heard to play fun mid-range mirrors, is, and that's exactly what we're doing today. Uh, we're, we're pretty much playing an Obzon mirror like of last season, except you just cut, you know, green from white, and it's just green, black yeah. versus white, black. Yeah. Uh, neither of us have Siege Rhino, but I got Gideon. Yeah. And I've got Sylvan Advocate. They played together. Yeah, that card's uh, great. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing Soul Tie mid-range. It's a deck that uh, originally... Uh, was somewhat designed by Owen Turtenwald for the uh the MTG Magic Online playoff tournament for the mocks, and uh, lately it has turned to be a more mid range deck, a little bit more removal in it. Still playing things like Nissa Tracker, Sylvan Advocate, even Gitrog Monster, and then it splashes for Dragonlord Slumgar, a card very good against the Planeswalker driven metagame that we see in Green White Tokens and Black White Control. Yeah, uh, I, I think the deck is well positioned. It has a lot of resilient creatures, a lot of kind of built-in natural card advantage, uh, and uh, above all else, it's efficient. And I think that that's uh, probably the biggest draw to it. Yeah, one of the things that Sultai does really well is that it can constantly keep putting things on the board while gaining card advantage through Nissas and Trackers and even Dustwatch Recruiters, so that... Even though you might be on turn five, six, seven, eight in the game, you still have resources. The deck rarely falls uh, far behind on a resource advantage, but even when it's running out of things to to cast, it still has five uh, creature lands and excess clues in play. Yeah, you're never gonna like have a, a you know more than one turn where you're not doing something. Yeah, you know, like it, it, whether it's popping clues or or activating creature lands, you know, you just you have a, a lot of mana sinks. Awakening and, ruin is path. There's yeah. just so much mana sinks. And now Todd's going to be playing uh, the list Owen Turtonwall took to a top eight in GP Minneapolis. Man, it's just Owen Day. I mean, that's that happens when you're every in the second day's place, Owen yeah. Day when yeah. it's every day's Oratsmus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And his list of black white control was slightly better than mine and the one that Cedric and I played. Um, and he just kind of evolved the strategy to have a couple more colorless lands in Battlefield Forge, uh, cut down and secure the ways from uh, Seth Manfield's original list. And the deck was very good. Now, I took nine. Cedric went 12 3 after not playing any standard in this format, which just shows how powerful this deck actually is. And so this matchup is going to be very mid range driven, where Todd is going to actually be the aggressor, even though his deck is called Black White Control and mine is mid range, because my deck's trying to just gain it more card advantage than his. Yeah, I, I basically have to find a way or a, at least like a turn or two to actually close the game on Brad because uh, Brad's deck is built to just go super late and we, we've seen this out of decks like uh, Band Collected Company where you know they play Tracker and Dust Watch Recruiter and uh, all these things that just generate a lot of virtual card advantage and raw card advantage. And a uh, control deck without a way to actually close the door is is highly disadvantaged against a deck like that, uh, which is why I think it's so important to play stuff like uh, Secure the Waste into Westvale Abbey or Secure the Waste into a Gideon Emblem. Yeah, I played the deck in Grand Prix Minneapolis, and I was shocked at how many times I killed people with that. Just or even the threat of it, like getting emblem plus seven tokens plus a Westfell Abbey up, you just have full control of the game. Especially when one card can turn into eight tokens, yeah. and eight tokens is really good against one you know single shot removal spells like Ultimate Price and Grasp. So that's how the matchup is going to play out. Uh, we'll talk about the sideboarding, and then we'll have a good conclusion about this matchup, which I think we were starting to see more often. Uh, once the Soul Time mid range deck leaves Magic Online and actually starts having a big impact at real card tournaments. Mm -hmm. All right, so 7 Eleven's game. Yep. Seven, seven. All right, go ahead. Seven is the loser, 11 is the winner. If they happen at the same time. All right, never mind. Doesn't if they happen matter. at the same time, you get to go first all five games. But we have yet to have that. Well, right. it's happened once before we said all five games. Oh, is, has it? I forgot if yeah. it did. All right. You won. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to keep this hand. It's uh, it's very mid rangey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this hand definitely needs some help. I think this is actually a pretty good hand on the draw because it gives us uh, one more turn to find a second white source. But 
Uh, other than that, it's hard to ask for a better start. All right. Just going to play an advocate and pass. All right. Don't have a great answer to that just yet, but uh, we will try to slow him down a little bit. Looking to take like a tracker. Which is yep. there. Strand him with a couple of Runas paths, so we'll X all that. Right. There's a quag and a waste. Quag and a, yep. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, tack. 18. Go. No follow-up there is pretty sweet. Go. Here, because the game is going to go for a very long time, I don't even mind losing a quagmire here if he wants it. It's actually kind of a strange play I'm about to make. But I think it's correct-ish. Uh, we're going to make two tokens in block. All right. So it's basically using it as, as like a, a dark banishing to kill the Quagmire. And it could end up being great later on in the game. But we want to make sure that we can actually get to that point. Keeping him off of land is actually pretty good too in case he ends up drawing uh, like an Obnixilis or some some big spell or like a Get Drog monster. All right, uh, we're going to play a Languish. Just get rid of the Advocate. Okay. All right, let's uh, cast Oath of Nyssa. Sure. All right, which finds us a Tracker. And now, the thing about Tracker is I could try to Sandbag it for a turn, but then that could, like, really hurt me if he starts playing Planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to play Yeah, you don't want to have to spend next turn... Uh, like killing my Gideon, right? So. Exactly. All right. Well, we don't want him to get any sort of uh, early leverage. Again, we're kind of spewing our cards here, but I think this is okay to do. I just want to use our mana efficiently. It's and really hard to, to get more value out of. We really are just saving this one card uh, for something a little more important. So I think is the big deal. All right. Uh... Nissa, play the forest. Your turn. All right, so he's got five mana. A Gitrog would be quite good. Uh, we know he has two Runus Path. We can play Gideon and make a 2 2. And he can't quite go Runus Path plus attack it. He would need seven mana for that. Uh, or just seven mana to make a four four. So we're gonna take one down to fourteen, and then I'm gonna make a knight ally. All right. And I know he's probably just gonna ruin his path to Gideon, but you were wrong. Oh, no. Ultimate price the token, take a pain and kill the Gideon. Yep, that is something we were kind of afraid of, but he didn't have it last turn. He he drew it off the top. Otherwise, he would have ultimate price end of turn. So. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to say go. A couple options, but... Trigger. What if it was an Evolving Wilds? Yeah, it'd feel kind of dumbish. I ain't anguish it. All right. I'll uh, go to 12. And then I will attack. I'm at 10. Your turn. Um... Uh... Yeah, we don't really want to give him a big old target for a an Awakened Runus Path. So I guess we'll just say go. Could nope. attack for two, but... All right, we'll secure for four. Attack draw. I'll make it get an emblem... Attack for eight. All right, I'll go to 11. Here you go. Right, and I'll languish. And your turn. So we know he still has two runes pass and a what, random card. He got and three. Random card. So we can probably f get in an attack here for free. Gain two, so we'll try to do that. Take two. Okay, that's fine. So nine to ten. Yep. Here you go. All right. Uh, I guess we'd be getting in for three, not two. Animate attack for two. 
Okay, eight. And go. A good top deck. <laughs> um, yeah, he's gonna get the Runus Path, but I think we just want to get a card. Yeah. Plus, that'll let us do something cool next turn. Yeah, we're at eight, so we can afford to do it once. So, all right. Put you at seven. Here you go. And he still needs a land in order to awaken and attack. Yeah, and that's that'll be the awakened land. Okay. So I go to four. Yep, four to seven. That's a cool thing you get to do. Oh no, not a shambling events. So it's kind of weird. I don't want to uh, wait and give him a target for his Runus Path because that could end just end up killing me. So we're just going to Runus Path this. All right. Go. I think we... He's in a spot where he needs to top deck. Uh, wait, I, did I just tap this horribly? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, he needs a top deck and instant speed way to deal with the Shambling Vent. He can only hit me for two. I can even go to three and use Grass of Darkness on it. And he knows about the grasp, so... Um, I guess I don't need... I can do that. Ah. Uh, that was, monster. Yeah, that was a good one. Your turn. Now I feel like a doofus. But I did want to keep <laughs> an instant speed way to be able to deal with a future 4-4 four four if it comes up. All right, attack. So I can trade here with the Grasp and the Shambling Vents. And honestly, at my life total, it might be correct because that Grasp is going to get annoying. I do want a card out of this monster to try to, like, generate some card advantage, but it's really hard to argue with a two-for-one. All right, so I'll go to seven, and then I'll Grasp it. Yeah. Go. So there was no point in grasping it before damage uh, because of the death touch ability. Check for five. Five, and then I'll take one and go to six and play Cletus. Okay. Go. Uh, so I can go to four here and ultimate price that now. Uh, and that'll let me activate Westfell Abbey. So we'll do that. Four. Puts us in on a clock where the two hits from the Quagmire will kill us, but with Abby, that's not so bad. Yeah, if we do this, we just die, so go. <laughs> Monster. Man, okay. Your turn. Uh, Take one, make an Abby. Yeah, you're at three. Selling one I didn't get, obviously. <laughs> one, what What is it? It's a cleric? Yeah. Uh, human cleric. It might be under human, uh, okay. unfortunately. You just go to untap. All right. I'm at three. Whoop. All right. I'm going to get in and make a two-two. I'm going to go to two. All right. And then my turn. Yep. All right. I'm going to tap Land or Waste for Colorless and then sacrifice it. Draw for the monster. Um, not use. Okay. The mana, draw. And... Play Lanor Wastes, Ruinous Path of This, Awaken, play His and Quagmire because of the Gitrog, and attack. All right. Am I at three or two? I'm at two, right? You're at two. Okay. All right. Uh, minus four this and Eek. jump here. Okay. Go. 
All right. Well, he's got no cards in hand, but he does have a Gitrog, so we need to peel away to and I can activate both. deal with that. Uh, go. Untap, trigger on the stack, tap line where wastes, sack that, draw for the sack. <clears throat> uh, green, black, animate, mm -hmm. draw for turn. That's an interesting one. <laughs> Don't think it's gonna do much for this turn. Alright. Animate attack. Yeah. Alright, I'm on the play here for game two, and we're keeping kind of a gooser looser. But it's gotta read the bones? No. Oh. <laughs> it's gotta read the moonlight. Oh. <laughs> It's basically the same thing. <laughs> uh, I end up having Mulligan, and I have two pretty weak cards in the matchup, but I still think it was a keep, and even though I like this card a lot, we got to bottom it. All right. It's probably going to come back to bite me, but, you know. Go. Land. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, what? <laughs> All right. I will cast this creature with mana. Oh, man. Rats. <laughs> All right. We'll Moonline your spawns and hope that you right. exile it. Oh, you didn't exile it. Okay. <laughs> Dead. Go. <laughs> My hand's really bad too, though. Tech for two. Pass turn, pass turn, pass turn. <laughs> land, another advocate. Okay. Go. What do we need now? Land, land. land. Languish. All right, go. Oh, no. <laughs> two. I think this was Tech. a keepable hand. Maybe I'm just wrong. Puts you at 14. Yep. <sighs> YOLO. Yeah, what could? Go. how could you get punished? Well, I don't have Declaration of Stone, do I? I only attack for six if you go land, land. All right, Dark Ritual, Languish. <laughs> go. I quit. <laughs> came, came, came to Brad. <laughs> All right, we're here for sideboarding. Uh, if you want to take a look down here, we have... Uh, it's kind of a weird sideboard plan. Um, I think this is mostly Brad's ideas, but uh, from from the from the black green, yeah, uh, from the black green side, you can usually expect virulent plague because it's so good against uh, token based strategies. And uh, you know, in this matchup in particular, you know, a, a single virulent plague can lock down uh, my Gideons for the most part. You know, since they are able to generate a lot of uh, board advantage, and being able to shut that down is important. And plus, one of my biggest ways to actually win the game, or easiest ways to win the game, is secure the wastes and shutting off secure the waste plus Westvale Abbey I think is a big deal so we're kind of trying to go counter to that mm -hmm. by just cutting our secures uh, all the way. Uh, Languish can come out. It slowly gets worse as the game goes. He can sometimes get his trackers too big or his advocates, you know, once he hits six mana. And it also doesn't kill Gitrog Monster or uh, the Hissing Quagmires late, or whatever. Late so. flip misses, everything. Yeah, just a bunch of stuff that doesn't really hit. It's kind of clunky. It's rare that's going to two for one because we uh, a lot of times need to cast it just to kill the one thing that's in play. Mm -hmm. So this inefficient, basically one for one removal spell. How Moonlight also can come out. Uh, it tricked me into keeping that last hand, which I should not have, I guess. But, uh, we're going to be bringing in some more hand disruption, uh, two duress, two more transgress, since we already have two in the main, uh, two copies of Thought Knots here, and then another ultimate price. It doesn't have uh, a, a lot of targets, but it has important targets. Sylvan Advocate and uh, Tracker are both very good uh, at getting hit by ultimate price, and that's important when you're trying to be this one-for-one -one attrition -y type mm -hmm. uh, deck. Uh, Bear of Silence, similar thing. He's going to have usually one major creature in play that I'm not going to be able to deal with and bear can be able to take care of that and then thought not goes with the hand disruption plan yeah and from my side i'm going to be taking out all the ultimate prices my languishes and kalidus as well and one swamp on the draw since i want to be bringing in two virulent plagues to handle uh any of todd's token generation another grass to handle uh cards like uh thought not seer and shambling vents three duress and a transgress to be my hand disruption package, along with one painful truce and a ruinous path to help out for the long game, as well as just making sure card avenge planeswalkers don't stick around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we open up here in game three with a hand with a lot of lands, which I love, uh, <laughs> and then a couple spells. So definitely what this kind of deck wants, since we're so, uh, uh, I guess, high casting cost dense. Yeah. <laughs> Our curve is very high. We like lands. My hand's a little uh, slow to the party since I'm going to have any Valven Wilds and then hopefully Oath to get me more lands. But for the most part, I can't uh, argue 
uh, mulliganing this. It's one great thing about Oath of Nyssa is that Go. either it's going to find you the land you need, or if you're flooded, it can find you a creature. So we'll try to curve out here with the Transgress the Mind. Ooh. It's actually a little rough over there for us, I guess. We'll take Tracker for now. That could be the one that ends up hurting us a lot. Yeah, it is, especially with seeing the Evolving Wilds, like I'm going to be able to get two clues out of there. Yeah, more than likely. Uh, play an Advocate and Pass. All right. Uh, we're going to play a Read the Bones, going to 18. Top two. All right. So the second copy of Transgress is fine because it allows us to take away his Slumgar at some points. Uh, we don't really need the extra land right now, and we really need at least one removal spell, so I'm going to keep the Transgress and look for removal. All right. So here, because we have... Uh we have now drawn these two cards. I want to try to find another tracker before using the Evolving Wilds. So I'm going to Oath, Trigger, find an option. <laughs> I, I <laughs> found one. I found I'm going to go to 19, play another Advocate and Tech for two. All right, I'm at 16. Your turn. All right, I'll go Transgress. Yeah, so you have Oath and two lands. Yeah, it took a pain to hide the top deck forest. Uh, we're going to take two and grasp one of your advocates. All so right. 14. Let's sure go. Yeah, 14 to 19. All right, I could get in two here. Maybe that is worth it. I'm at 14 already. Yeah, I know. And I don't even know what I want to Oath into yet. Nothing besides, like, another tr advocate... Nothing's great to cast this turn anyway, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to attack for four. All right. I'm at ten. Your turn. One thing that I see a lot of good players do is just attack with creature lands in these mid-range matchups a lot more frequently. Like, shout out the GP against me, just attack turn four with a counter. With He didn't have a counter spell in his hand, and I've already seen his hand, so he just shambled and vents me. Take two. Uh, we're kind of in a weird spot here. Um, I think we actually just want to play this Forsaken Sanctuary tapped and not cast anything. Maybe that's foolish. Maybe we go to 8, then we go to 4, and then we go to 3, then we go to 6. So the problem is if I draw something I want to cast, like an Ultimate Price or a Grasp of Darkness, uh, I would need to probably play my West Valley first because I don't really want to read the bones into more lands. Uh, but I also want to make sure I can actually cast one of those cards if I draw it. Grasp being the particular one why I would play the West Valley first. I think actually I can gamble a little bit and not play the West Valley first because if I draw an Ultimate Price, that's fine. So we're going to mm -hmm. go to and eight. You have three of them. Yeah. All right, we'll just put two lands on the bottom. Draw two. All right. I uh, don't really want to cast this transgress. I think there's a good chance it just misses, and I would take a damage to do so. So go. All right. At the very so, least, we might get a little more information off Oath if he wants to keep uh, a Planeswalker like an Omnixilus or something. All right. I'm just going to take a force and play a force and attack for four. All right. I'm at four. Go. All right, that's going to be a good turn for us. Uh, we don't actually have to end up taking any damage because with that, we're going to minus three there. Puts me back up to 11. seven. No, I was... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you're at four. Seven. Mm -hmm. And he can't attack and kill the... Uh, what if I have land, Sylvan Advocate? If you have land, Sylvan Advocate, that'd be rough. I don't. Dope. Uh, I do have a path, and then a Lumbering Falls. Your turn. Yeah, Lumbering Falls is a little tough. Tough to deal with. <laughs> Alright, so we know you have an Involving Wilds and a Rando? Yeah. Alright, well, we don't have much else to do. We can make a Westfell Abbey to block. That is a reason to not play this other card. So I guess we'll just do that. If he just goes attack with, like, you know, blue source attack with Lumbering Falls, I think it's important to make sure we can jump block 
attack. Um, I guess I leave that out. All right, we'll take it. Chat five. Yep. All right, well, let's go. All right, we'll go to four. Make an abbey. Guess I'm just gonna shortcut this. Sure. What if you draw a thing? Well, I've been hoping to draw a thing, but now I need a thing for my lumbering falls. All right, so now we're gonna threaten to double block a hissing quagmire. Uh, yeah, so we'll say go. Still need to wait one more turn before we think about even casting transgress. All right, uh, keeping these up, animate and attack. Yeah, right, jump. All right. And then I will play a force and pass. All right, we'll go to three. Yeah. There's a card I do not want you to draw. Is it Forsaken Sanctuary? <laughs> <laughs> All right, transgress. Ooh, we got that pass. All right, go. Hmm. I think we can wait on that and just get our beats on. It's going to be so much different if you just drew Shamley Mints. <laughs> yeah, I bought him two of them, though, because I was oh, a little wow. flooded. All right, uh, make one jump, jump, jump. Yep, your, right. your turn. I need to draw Gideon. Does Gideon? that do it? Maybe. All right, I'm going to take two points of pain land damage. <laughs> Just drew way too many lands? Yeah. I mean, I bought them four. Oh, jeez. Yeah. All right, here for game four on the play. I already lost the match, but we're going to try to uh, keep ourselves from getting embarrassed. This <laughs> hand looks suspiciously like a mono black deck. <laughs> My hand is fairly weak, but I don't think it's worth mulliganing, so I'm going to keep it. All right, I am just going to go get a swamp and pass the turn. All right, transgress the mind. Ugh. Did I miss, sir? No. <laughs> All right, kind of want to take plague because it's just generically great in the matchup. Yeah, I'm going to take play. That's fine. All right. All right. Here you go. I mean, this is, is Nissa. Like, <clears throat> it's going to get him a land no matter what, and probably going to cost me a removal spell at some point. But 18. All this right, does well. look like a, this does look like a uh, mono black deck. This, this does give me the pressure of not having to deal with a turn four Gideon, so I don't mind that, but I do need some card advantage myself. All right, last game we got stuck with two dead Runas Pass in hand, basically, so we're just going to go ahead and burn one. All right. <laughs> just for fear of... Or mostly I just want to use my mana efficiently on, on this turn. Advocate, your turn. So many lands coming to play tapped. Yeah, eight of them. I have nine. All right, uh, price that thing. Go. <laughs> Go. All right, so we do have a reasonable amount of control this game thanks to all these removal spells and read the bones. So we're going to go 16, cast another one. Looking for basically just all spells. Bottom these two lands. Let's hope we don't flood out again horribly like last time. All right, so we actually have a, a plan here. No, wait, I'm going to play a duress. No. Try to clear the way. Yeah, take that ruinous path. Here go. Uh-oh. Go. I think we're going to win one. Yeah, I do not feel good about this. All right. All right. Oh, you're going to slow burn me? All right. 17. 17. Here go. Oh. I might emblem. You might emblem. If you get a slum car. <laughs> well, I did just hit really good on Oath. Okay. Miss. <laughs> Wow, I'm going to win one. Go. I'm going to win one. 
Probably already has Slumgar and he's just waiting for me to get to nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to go. All right. Guess we'll play it. That's Another walker. Uh -huh. No, I'm gonna wait one second before I actually do that. Uh, cast another random bone. Jeez. Fourteen. What are you doing? Stop. Um, Hammer time. Bottom. Planeswalker. Nope. Did I, what? I literally just bottomed these two cards. <laughs> <laughs> literally. That was very weird. All right, we'll try to kill Brad fast so he doesn't complain. Tack. No, I have a grass. Grass yeah. button. Go. I lose one. 16. Good draw, monster. Okay. Play and fetch. Draw a card. Play another land. I ain't done yet. Okay. Another land. Go. <laughs> Play it. <laughs> Ruinous path. You'll get your rock monster. All right. Attack. Twelve. Go. All right. Dead. <laughs> I really wanted you to slumgar and then make twelve one once. <laughs> what then would I you have done? I would have cried. And yeah. <laughs> and lost. All right. Well, I'm gonna keep a really risky one on the play. Very. Okay. Uh, just FYI, I boarded out a swamp for the third duress. Uh, I think it's important to make sure that uh, in matchups where you're going to be hitting each other with a lot of discard that you don't flood too badly. Like, obviously, hitting line drops is important um, in these kind of matchups, mm -hmm. but also making sure you have stuff to do in the late game is also good. And cards like duress and transgress slow the game down enough where you can actually uh, draw out of a mana screw. Traverse for swamp duress. Two grass, two transgress, and ultimate price. Um, well, he's going to be killing everything. I'd rather him not be picking apart my hand as well, so I think I'm just going to take one of those. Okay. Yeah. All right, your turn. Was it if I duress you on one, you lost because you don't have a, another land? Maybe. <laughs> All right, we'll transgress. <laughs> oh, no. What do we take? Feels kind of pointless to take Anissa since he's got two, but also uh, he's, if I don't take one and I'd probably have to kill the one of them at some point, yeah, I'll take a Anissa. <laughs> already set up for the exile. <laughs> yeah, go. Brad's smarter than me. That's why he already put it there and why he <laughs> ob, ob peels immediately. <laughs> Is your hand just all creatures? I forgot yeah. to write it down. Yeah, I'll show it to you. You know my whole hand. All right, go. All right, can I pick it up? Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to tag for two. Okay. Drop you to 18, and then I'm going to get my first clue for my deck with a bunch of clues. <laughs> go. All right. We will ultimate prize the tireless tracker. All right, I'll go to 16. Dumb bones. No, that card's so good. Oh, I actually need both these, kind of. So, okay. Go. Or, go. Land go, yeah. All right, I'm going to pop, draw a card. Tilt. Mm -hmm. Play an advocate. And attack for two. 14. Your turn. Ha, I said it in this language. Just for you. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to duress you, though. Hopefully, spike something. Tight. Ooh, Slumgar and a Gitrog. All right, sack dude. Ooh, spicy. Mm. Why didn't you play your Evolving Wilds last turn? Because there wasn't really a spell I could cast. I could just cast the... Cast Gitrog a naked Gitrog. Yeah. Now I feel stupid. Nah, you smart. He can't block. You should swing at me for four. Yeah. Ten. ten. Go. 
I wanted to take the one value shot at getting a card off my get drug. Sure. But I can't fall too far behind anymore. All right. Uh, attack. And we're going to go ahead and grasp that. Sure. 18. 18 to 10. Here we go. And do I know your hand? Uh, I know you at least have one removal spell, right? I think you know this. Fine. All right. I just I have to put the get drug into play, even though. Uh, and we have to get a swamp because if we attack with hissing quagmire and it dies, and I draw a ruinous path, I'll just have to take a pain off of my, uh, yeah, my coast if I ever. So I know you have that one removal spell. You do know a grasp o darkness. Okay. All right, monster. Go or go. That's because I'm gonna have to sack lands. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Let me tap this differently. Okay. Yeah. Top two. Well, don't really need any more lands, so we'll put two more lands on the bottom. <laughs> All right. Kill it. No. Attack. All right. 16, 16 to 8. Yeah. yeah. Do you have how many cards? I have three. Go. You got it, dude. <laughs> Oh. Right, 15. I took a pain from that. <laughs> Alright. Thought not seer. Tilt. Ooh. Ooh. Here we go. Alright. Attack for seven. And we're definitely going to grasp something. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think we actually have to target Bear of Silence because next turn... Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm still taking five. So I'm kind of desperate for a way to kill Salumgar because I don't really want to trade Thought Knot for Hissing Quagmire. So I think I just target this. Yeah. And just gamble. So I take five down three. Play another Craigmire. Go. All right. Whoop. That probably is not it. Make an emblem. <laughs> oh, no. No ultimate price targets. The white. Yeah, and no, I take two, but I also just have this ultimate price that doesn't target anything. Yeah, that's sometimes the downside of this matchup. Your removal just ends up weird. All right, so when we did this versus video, I told Todd that Sultai was going to be a little bit favored in the matchup, and it it was in those games, but those aren't the games that I'm usually playing out. Like, oh yeah, your opponents are usually really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I've been on the black white side of things, knowing that the matchup can be a little rough. And granted, my list usually has a third omnix list and sideboard for this specific matchup. Yeah, I just want—I never drew that guy. I wanted to. I know. To. Well, I didn't it's draw so many good. of the cool things, and like I never did anything cool with Gitrog and creatures. And that's kind of how mid range plays out. We're just right. trying to. That's because your deck's bad. My deck's yeah. great. Your deck is great. That's why I uh -oh. should have drawn better. Yeah. I'm so unlucky. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think that's kind of the problem with with mid range decks like this, where you know you have way too many answers and not enough like threats, and mm -hmm. and. You know, if if you only have a few things that your opponent really needs to combat, you know, uh, you're kind of left like a lot of games I lost with like two or three spells in hand that just didn't interact with the board in the way that I needed them to. And I'm I I obviously probably messed up a few times. And well, it's uh, also this this deck is also designed to play cards that are difficult to deal with in the format and the way that the like the decks are playing creature removal. Um, the deck is lined up to be good against a wide variety of removal spells. Yeah, I mean, it felt like uh, at, at varying points you just had, uh, you know, certain threats that were just a little awkward for me to deal with. Mm -hmm. Like you had a, a couple of times where your creatures lands were beating me down when I had Runus Path stuck in hand, mm -hmm. or I had Ultimate Price, but all your creatures were multicolored or colorless. You know, and it's it's a little awkward that if you play a, a deck like like this black white deck, like Owen's black white deck, um. You know, you can get into those spots where 
You just don't have the right answer, mm -hmm. you know? And that's one of the benefits to playing a creature-heavy version of a similar strategy, which yep. I think is is the the main thing we were trying to showcase in this in this particular matchup. Yeah, and that now a matchup like Crypto Thrites, the black-white deck is going to be extremely favored, uh, whereas the Sultai deck has a little tough time dealing with that matchup. Even though you have all the languishes, you just have all these, like, awkward schizophrenic draws of like some creatures and languish and you have Kalidus in your deck but you don't really have an like an answer to uh Ormondal where black white has a ton of them uh and so uh well it has a decent amount also it has uh displacers in the board and and it's easier to keep them off of the tokens yeah, sure. but uh i do believe that this soul tie deck is the next place that mid-range decks are going to go and if you're local metagame uh, or a tournament that you're traveling to, you expect a lot of black, white, and green, white tokens, and less crypto threats, which is where I do believe the format's going, why I'm showcasing this matchup. This is a good deck to take. Also, this is the closest deck that I have found to Obzon. Just like old school, I guess it's old school now, but not really. Last yeah, season's but... Obzon deck, this is the new Obzon. It's got card advantage, it grinds out very long games, it has Salamgar, which is super powerful right now. And it's got Siege right now. And it doesn't have Siege Rhino. Oh, uh, that's mm. a false advertisement. I'm sorry. Yeah. It does not have Siege Rhino. It has Kalidus, which is very similar to Siege Rhino. That's it has true. a lot of text. Yeah. Kalidus, Kalidus is, is a great card, especially in the current metagame. You know, if, if so many decks are playing uh, like Crypto Thrice, like these tons of small creatures, uh, you know, Kalidus alongside a single sweeper effect is just going to be so devastating. Yeah. I actually uh, played Black White in GP Minneapolis and I was telling Cedric how to play it, how to sideboard it because he didn't really play any magic. And I was like, all right. So if you, against Crypto Thrice, uh, if you. Uh, cast Kalidus and they reflect your mage it, you follow it up with a languish. And if you cast Kalidus and they don't reflect your mage it, you follow, you follow it up, up with, with a languish. languish yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you sweep them, you get four tokens. Yeah, three know. or four tokens, but you just always languish after you Kalidus. Yep. That's about the only time that you have to not languish that uh, that matchup. But uh, And that's really how this deck plays out, too. Like, I have cast Sylvan Advocate into Tyler's Tracker, and they just swamp the board, and then yeah. I just languish. I think everything. Brad tricked me into sideboarding badly. That's all I'm going to say. That's how I sideboard the matchup. Yeah, but you know. No, I don't. I say it every week. Brad's stupid. I am very stupid. No, nah, Brad's great. <laughs> Deck's great. Uh, <laughs> I, I definitely uh, threw away one game just by not, like, not mulliganing. I think uh, this is a deck that can mulligan pretty well since you have yep. Read the Bones. And game two, I... You know, I had the the cycler, but I was on the play with only two lands and a bunch of cards. That and you had to four, read the so. bones, right? No, I didn't. Oh yeah, so yeah. If I had to read the bones, yeah. it was it was a fine, a fine keep, keep, and I would have yeah. just got a little. And I have kept those hands. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's all we got for this week. Join us next week with some more verse reviews, articles, videos, all that jazz. We will see you next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye.